think would win in a race between me and Olympic 100 meter champion Shelly Ann Fraser Price. Okay, but what if I was given a 10 meter head start? Shelly Ann Fraser Price can run 100 meters in 10.71 seconds. So let's round that down to 10 seconds. I can run 100 meters in, um, give me a minute. Go. About 20 seconds, give or take. Shelly Ann Fraser Price can run 100 meters in 10 seconds. So if I start 10 meters ahead, she'll take one second to catch up to the 10 meter mark. But in that time, I'll have run five meters. Once she's caught up another five meters, I'll have run 2.5 meters. Once she's caught up that, I'll have run another 1.25 meters and so on. So I'll always be ahead, right? Well, clearly we know that she will pass me because if we plot our time and distance from the starting line on a graph, we can see that there is a point where she will pass me at two seconds. But does this mean that I can take an infinite amount of steps in a finite amount of time? Running five meters takes me one second. Running 2.5 meters takes me half a second. Running 1.25 meters takes me a quarter of a second and so on. So this infinite amount of steps takes me a total of two seconds, a finite amount of time. This is known as a super task, but a super task has a lot of philosophical problems. In this scenario, there's no final step. How do I know that I'm ever going to cross that 10 meter mark? Physicists say that time and space aren't infinitely divisible, but as we're philosophers, we don't care about real life. Let's consider the example of Thompson's lamp. Suppose a lamp gets switched on at one minute to noon, off at 30 seconds to noon, on at 15 seconds to noon, and so on. Will the lamp be on or off at noon? The problem here is that there's no last step, similar to the previous example. There's not enough information for us to know whether the lamp's gonna be on or off at the end of the process. Let's consider another example, known as the Littlewood-Ross paradox. Suppose I have an infinite number of marbles, each labeled with the numbers one to infinity, and an infinitely large jar. In step one, I add marbles one to 10 to the jar and take away marble number one. In step two, I add numbers 11 to 20 to the jar and take away marble two, and so on. How many marbles will be left in the jar after an infinite number of steps? Well, because each marble gets taken away at some point, marble n gets taken away at step n, there's actually zero marbles left in the jar. But what about if it was slightly different? If, for example, I took away the 10th marble at the end of every step, so marble 10 in step one, marble 20 in step two, then every marble that isn't a multiple of 10 would still be in the jar at the end of the process. So there would be an infinite number of marbles left. The problem here is that the question infinity minus infinity is not a sensible one that we can ask. We can't ask what is the infinity of the marbles going in the jar minus the infinities of the marble being taken out of the jar. Supertasks cause problems not just for the concept of infinity. They also cause a lot of philosophical problems. Let's go over to Philosophy Corner to find out more. Hello and welcome to Philosophy Corner, where today we're discussing the philosophical implications of supertasks. The first issue is time. What does now mean? Is it a moment? Well, if it's a moment, does it have length? It must have length to exist. So it must have a beginning moment and an end moment, and there must be infinitely many moments between it. So the concept of now seems to disappear. With new developments in our understanding of special relativity, it seems that we do not have an objective view of time. There isn't so much past, present and future as there are simply events that are before and after one another. We are just viewing one slice of space-time. Another issue related to supertasks is that of explaining what maths is. Some philosophers of maths, known as anti-realists, will say that maths isn't real, it doesn't exist in reality. But in response to that, others will say, well, in order for mathematical statements to make sense and be verifiable, they must make reference to something in reality. For example, if I say this is a cube, I'm referencing something in reality and I can check if my statement is true. So, if maths doesn't exist, what does it make reference to? Well, one response to this is that it makes reference to omega sequences. This is an infinite set of ordered objects. 
This doesn't have to exist in our world, but it has to be possible in some capacity. So, by studying supertasks like the examples given before, we can make a claim about whether or not it's possible, and whether or not this is a valid explanation of what maths is. Supertasks get even more complicated when we consider different sizes of infinity. Supertasks deal with countably many tasks, hypertasks deal with uncountably many tasks, and ultratasks have one task for every ordinal number. The concept of infinity has given us loads of interesting ideas and even more problems and paradoxes. It would be impossible to discuss all of them now, but I hope this has got you thinking about humanity's amazing ability to confuse ourselves. In any case, I think I'll leave the running to the professionals.